welcome to RIT webcast helping you to prepare for your PMP CAPM exam. Your host is Dr. Tox on Nobanjo. The topic today is critical path analysis part four. IITA is located at 2470 Windy Hill Road, Suit 322A, Merita, Georgia 30067, telephone 404-207-3981. We're starting with the output of critical panel analysis and we are going to be talking about how to treat uncertainties, how to do resource histogram, how to use resource histogram, resource smoothing, and optimizing the schedule. We're going to first of all uh, discuss some key key issues which we have discussed earlier, but we just want to review them. Schedule network schedule network analysis generate schedule project schedule generate project schedule critical path analysis or critical path method calculate the early starting the early finish the late starting and the late finish dates without regards to any resource limitation activity on the critical path as you know and as we have discussed as total floats of zero all the activities have zero floats. Activities on the critical path are all called critical path activities. Free float is the early starting of the following activity, less early starting of the previous activity, less duration or late finish of following activity, less late starting of previous activities let the duration of this previous activity free float is the amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of the immediate successful activity in the network why total float is the amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the completion of the completion time of a project is the amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the completion time of a project critical chain this modifies project schedule accounting for limited resources often resulting in altered critical path critical chains and buffers Critical buffers placed at the end of a critical chain is called project buffer and it protects against completion slippage. Feeding buffers are placed at the point that a chain of dependent tags not on the critical chain feeds into the critical chain. Resource leveling. This is to keep resources used at constant level between two or more activities. What if scenario analysis? A kind of sensitivity analysis, examples Monte Carlo analysis. Applying list and lag. List is to go ahead, like you want to construct a building, you go and clear the, the land ahead. Lags is to wait. It's a delay, like we're waiting for the slab, concrete slab, cement to kill. Schedule compression is to shorten the duration of critical path activities to reduce critical path duration. And you do that by two methods. One is called crashing, bringing additional resources to expedite activities on the critical path and this often leads to increase in cost. Fast tracking means phases of or activities 
on critical path normally perform remember normally perform in sequence are performed in parallel often results in rework and with an increased risk such as doing plumbing and electrical work at the same time at the same place that could lead to risk because electricity and water are not friends now let's look at some example of how uh, uncertainty, is, uncertainty is, is treated tax one um, as the ratio of two tax two as the ratio of seven tax four as the ratio of four so if we add, if we add the duration together two plus seven is nine plus four is thirteen while tax three as the ratio of five we add two plus five that is seven plus four that is eleven so this tax one tax two and tax four is the critical part so if you are not sure of the duration of tax three, uh, because you are not sure of the duration, that can change the game, the game, uh, the game plan. Because if this becomes eight, this now becomes the critical part. This one, three, four becomes the critical part. So we need to find an estimate uh, for for tax three, uh, you know, treating this as un uncertain, and there's way to treat uncertainty. Treating uncertainty, we use what we call the path estimate or the three point estimate. And what it means, the expected value is the optimistic plus four most likely plus pessimistic divided by six. So let's say the optimistic in this case for tax three is four days, very optimistic. The most likely five days, so it will be, and the pessimistic is 12 days. So using this formula, it will be four plus. 4 times 5, this 5 here, yeah, making 20 plus 12, this 12, making 36, 36 divided by 6, we give you 6, so the expected value will be 6. So if, if this is 6, it's still okay, this is still, it's still below 7, so this is still the critical part. But supposing we now want to look at this degree of spread, let's quickly look. This two histogram have the same mean, 6, but they have different spread. The first one, spread from 2.5 and then we also have on the right we have 9.5 here whereas here is 1.5 and on the right here we have 10.5 so they are the same mean but different spread so let's see the effects of this spread in the next slide now we don't know we want to calculate the certainty uh, standard deviation is used as a measure of spread in a normal distribution about 68 percent of estimates are within one standard deviation of the mean and about 95 percent of estimates are within two standard deviations of the mean while 99 percent of the estimates are within three standard deviation of the mean how do we calculate standard deviation this is a formula for the three point estimate or for the part that is an um, and that is uh, optimistic plus most likely plus pessimistic divided by six, and we have we have the figure for the optimistic as four days, most likely as five days, pessimistic at twelve days, or the course will be months anyway. So to calculate the standard deviation is the pessimistic minus the optimistic divided by six. So in this case, this will be twelve minus four divided by six. We now get one point three three. So the degree of certainty that this figure is certain, we are certain of it, what is the range in which the figure must will lie? With 68% certainty, the figure for tax 3 will lie between 4.63 to 7.33. And that means it is 6, six which you calculated normally at the duration uh, using the part, minus 1.33 or 6 plus 1.33 and that's what gives us the range of 4.63 to 7.33 with 95 percent certainty uh, it will be 6 plus 2 standard deviation or 6 minus 2 standard deviation it will be 6 minus 2 times 1.33 which give us 3.30 or 6 plus 2 standard deviation will give us 8.66 so we have 95% of certainty that is between 
8.30 and 8.60. With 99% uncertainty that the estimate for tax 3 will be 6 minus 3 standard deviation and 6 plus 3 standard deviation. 6 minus 3 standard deviation is 6 minus 1.33 times 3 and that will give us 1.97 and 6 plus 3 standard deviation will give us 6 plus 3 times 1.333 and that will give us 9.999 so we have 99% sure that the duration of tax 3 is within this range now let's do some classroom work uh, some classroom practice if we go through this route, tax 1, tax 2, tax 3, tax 7, tax 9, you will get the summation of all the durations here to be uh, 15. Whereas if you go through this way, tax, four, tax 1 is 4, 4 plus tax, uh, and tax 4 is 9, that is 13, plus 5, that is 18, plus 3, the original 3 here, that is 21. Plus two, so this 23. So the the critical point, the critical part is this because this is the longest. This these two others are shorter, you know, but this one is the longest. Yeah. Now let's look at another situation. In this case, in this case, uh, if you add two plus four, that is six. Plus two, eight. Plus five, thirteen. Plus five, that's eighteen. If you go through this route to also 2, the duration of 2 here plus 6, that's 8, plus 5, that's 13, plus 5, that's 18. So we have two critical points here. Uh, tax 1, 2, 3, 5, 7 is a critical point, and tax 1, 4, 5, 7 is another critical point. So we have two critical points in this classroom example. The last one, if you look at this, the, the the duration here is seven, the duration here is two, the duration here is two. So if we add this together, you get sixteen on this route. You get sixteen on this route. But but if you add this route together, seven plus five, the duration five here, that is twelve, plus three, twelve plus three is fifteen, plus two is seventeen. At the same time, if you had this route also seven plus four. That's 11, but there's a 4 days delay here. So 11 plus 4, that's 15 plus 2, making 17. So because of this delay, we have two critical parts here. This is a critical part, and, and this also is a critical part. Well, thank you. You can visit us at www.inc.com. We do both on-site training, off-site training. We do weekend training, we do weekdays training, and we do month long training for PMP and CAPM. Thank you for watching. Remember to see all the three, all the three, all the four um, episodes on critical part analysis, part one through part four. Thank you and have a good day.